Two weeks ago, a young man right in front of our church was shot down and killed. Right in front of our church. Didn't even make the news. Where, in a, where do you have somebody shot and killed in America in front of a church and nobody say a word about it? But I, I haven't, there hasn't been a day. In the last three months, I haven't cried every day. I cry every day. I want us just to take a moment. I don't want to take away from what we're here for, because it is something special that I think is making a difference. And that's why we can celebrate at the same time as we grieve. But would you just take a moment, not just for these two young men yesterday, but for all the young people that have been killed with gang, gang violence and violence in our, our, uh, our great city. Let's just take a moment of silence, and then I'm going to pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, we come with a, a grieving heart, of course, for the, for the pain that we feel with so many people that we've lost. We have a funeral today, just down the street in our church. 23-year-old man who was shot and killed. Lord, we know this. We're, we're here. And the people in this room, Lord, you know, want to make a difference. We thank you for the mayor. We thank you for his desire to improve this situation. We thank you for the aldermen that are here their desire to do it. And every human being in this room I know wants to help this. So be with that. And be with these businesses. I pray for them right now. I'm so excited about all the businesses and, and eating and the food, those that are cooking. And, and uh, we thank you for that. So be with our time together as we celebrate uh, this good news. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here at Lawndale, like all of you, we're on the west side, okay? And west side. Now some of you south siders, you ain't never been in this far north. Small businesses in our neighborhoods play a pivotal role 
And many people work for small businesses and they're creating jobs and, and making a difference. Here in Lawndale, we have Lawndale Christian Health Center. And that's the building that we're in here is owned by Lawndale Christian Health Center. Bruce Miller is our CEO. And this building was built with stimulus money. When, when, when the guy behind me was in the White House, he was helping push to make that happen. And so we invest in that. Thank you, Mayor, for, for being there and helping us with that. And then we have oh, Lawndale Christian good. Development Corporation, which is recipient of a grant. And we're so excited yeah, yeah. about that, to, to bring another restaurant into our community here on 16th Street where Dr. King lived. That will be over on 16th and Hamlin where Dr. King actually lived in that building. We built a building there, an apartment there. And we have Lawndale Christian Legal Center. Uh, we, this is Lawndale Christian Fitness Center. So we, we have come together. I have been here for 42 years, lived in this yeah. neighborhood. Amen. Somebody say amen. And yeah. I, you know what? The first book I wrote, here's what I said. I love living in Lawndale. All right? I love that. And then I wrote said a whole bunch of chapters. At the end of it, I said, at the very end, in case you missed it, I love living yeah. in Lawndale. You know what my guess is? That every one of our business owners that are coming here, you're going to meet them. They would say those same things. I love, I have passion for what I'm doing. All right. No, but the mayor's not pulling me down, but I, I'm going to. So we have this incredible initiative that will allow these businesses to thrive. So let me introduce now, because everybody's waiting. It's hot over there where our business owner. Let me introduce to you uh, our commissioner, David Reefman, uh, the Department of Planning, to announce it. Good morning, everybody. I, I learned something new every day in this job, and, and one of them I just learned now is please try not to follow Pastor Gordon. <laughs> so um, before the mayor takes the, um, the podium here, I want to just take a few minutes to talk about how we got here today. The mayor asked me to become planning commissioner a couple years ago, laying out the vision he had of one city where all of our neighborhoods grow together. And under his leadership, we've reformed the city zoning code last year to implement an entirely new density bonus system that literally shifts investments in our downtowns to our underserved neighborhoods, both on the west side and south side. Before we made these reforms, downtown developers chose from a menu of options that really benefited their own projects. That menu is 20 years old, and the mayor's reform eliminated that menu and created a voluntary payment system for larger buildings downtown. Those payments, we take 80% of those monies funneled into this neighborhood opportunity fund specifically to invest in commercial development projects in the south, southwest, and west sides. We got our first significant development payment this February. I'm going to let the mayor talk about it. But the purpose of the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund is to provide resources to revitalize these commercial corridors and create local jobs. Instead of providing loans, the mayor wanted to give these resources directly to local entrepreneurs in the form of grants, knowing the enormous impact this would have on our neighborhoods. There are basically two types of grants up to 250000 which are processed like our business-friendly SPIF program with a couple of enhancements, and more than 250000 which will require approval by the City Council. Getting here was not a simple process. To select today's recipients, first the City Council authorized the first funding amount, and we created an application process that was as streamlined as we could make it. We also worked with the aldermen and many community partners in the room to help get the word out and recruit applicants. And at the recommendation of the City Council, we also brought on a third-party administrator to help collect and evaluate applications. We chose Summer Corps, who also uh, manages our SPIF program, and I'd like to thank Jake Stern and the Summer Corps team for their hard work. We had an overwhelming response to this first round, more than 700 applications, and had the difficult task task of working through them to determine which ones fit the criteria for funding for this first round. And I think it's important to reiterate those criteria. In order to qualify for these loans, people must be, businesses must meet an existing community development plan in need, as has been articulated by the community, have a positive catalytic impact on a commercial corridor, provide goods or services where those goods or services are lacking, have the potential to leverage other resources, show a clear path to financial closing, commit to hiring from the neighborhoods, and are economically viable and sustainable. And after screening those criteria, we also work to distribute the funds equitably across the eligible areas, as you can see from that map. On top of that, we convened a great group of community development representatives from our Chicago Development Fund, the same group that reviews our new market tax credits, and they reviewed all of the applications, provided feedback on our recommendations, and I'd like to thank that group for their time. 
to our inaugural, our, our inaugural class of grant recipients, um, this is my long-winded way of saying that your selection is a testament to the strength of your proposals. You've made it through an arduous selection process from a large pool of great applications, many of which we look forward to funding in the future. In closing, I'll, mention, uh, I'll also mention that we'll distribute additional grants. The City Council will first need to do more funding authorization so future applicants will be following your example as the, pi the pioneers in this innovative program. Congratulations to all of you. We're incredibly excited to get your projects off the ground. And I'd like to turn the mic over to Craig Chico, the Executive Director of the Back of the Yards Neighborhood Council, to say a few words on behalf of the advisory group. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. I appreciate it. And on behalf of the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund Advisory Council, it's been a pleasure. And we're honored to be here today amongst all these award recipients. Uh, let me first say that the desire and the will to go out and find new money to fund these types of projects is to be commended. This is the type of projects and these are the type of neighborhoods that have, uh, have been invested in, have had little investment for decades. These are the types of communities and projects that our capitalistic norms don't take a chance on normally. But this mayor and this administration did. The innovative and creative way to leverage the downtown boom to lend assistance to our neighborhoods was just short of genius. So as the mayor is fond of saying, Chicago is made up of communities and neighborhoods, not just downtown. I think today we're seeing an example of action, not just words, and strengthening those neighborhoods, those communities, and those retail and commercial corridors. So, but before I turn it over to the mayor, I would like to say two things about the process. Uh, the commissioner was being a little uh, modest, I think, because one thing I really noted about this and I really need to say is that the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund process exhibited a lot of courage. When I say courage, I really mean it because there's a lot of risk involved. These aren't the type of loans that you can go to a bank and usually get. Some of the recipients are really good, high qualified people who have a great history in running their business, but wouldn't necessarily qualify for the lending criteria that's being used in today's capitalistic standard society. So I've got to say that I really do want to commend uh, the mayor, because when I looked over at Artie Kotek and when I looked over at some of my colleagues, I said, where is the real DPD? This is uh, this doesn't seem right. These these are they're not meeting all the standard criteria. What's, and and Artie said, give the mayor all the credit. He said, get this done, and they did. So I believe that uh, Commissioner Reedman and Artie Kotek should be commended also for the way they implemented. <laughs> uh, the second thing I want to say real quickly, quick, quick, quickly, is that the thoughtfulness and the compassion with the way this was done is second to none, but like uh, nothing I've ever seen in the city. Um, we looked at applicants like people, uh, we looked at applicants like successful business entrepreneurs, and we looked at people like long-standing residents of their communities. And that's the lending criteria that was used to choose these, uh, these recipients today. Not just balance sheets, not just tax returns, not just credit scores. This is, the, this is the type of compassion and the type of risk and courage that it took to invest in communities that have long since been ignored. So I think once again, these people should be commended and I think that uh, they've done an outstanding job. So um, the residents of the city of Chicago are, are, the benef are the beneficiaries today of this courage and I think that the mayor should be commended and as I bring him up, I wanna say thank you to him. This is the first of this type of, of uh, a grant award and I hope to see everyone back here for many, many years to come. And I'd like to now introduce the man who's responsible for this, the, the man who's responsible for the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, and for many of you recipients to have a chance today, Mayor Ron Emanuel. Yeah. Mayor, yeah, buddy. Thank you. Now you all saw, saw the energy by the coach. What I whispered to his ear was, I think you were only at the dessert pages getting all that sugar in you. Uh, let me also say, uh, I appreciate all the credit I want you all to give a hand to the aldermen here because they made sure that this happen. Uh, second is, I just told, I met with uh, all the winners, and I told them I was emotional today, and I, even though I'm proud of them, don't think that the emotion's about them. My middle child's uh, graduating high school. I told them if I start speaking, start crying, it's not because I'm really impressed with your product. <laughs> Dad's losing it today, man. Uh, this is like, when I left the house today, I uh, I tried to kiss her and give her a little snuggle, and 
swat at me, and I said, you know, well, you were, yeah, you're laughing too hard because it happens to you, man. <laughs> when, when she was four years old, I couldn't get her to sleep. Now when she's 18, I can't get her up. <laughs> it tells you everything, but I'm really proud of her, and so this is a, a day, a, heart, a, a great day, and there's joy to be had, and in our faith, when there's joy, there's also to remember why we're thankful for it. And I, want, I really want to, as I call this Sunday, a number of uh, the winners. Never have I felt more like Ed McMahon in my entire life. <laughs> uh, call him to think, and Ed to the person. No, really, is this the mayor? <laughs> come on, come on. I said, okay, hang up the phone and call me back. Right? And then, this is your mayor. You remember at 5 8, the loud guy on TV? Hey, yeah, this is the mayor. <laughs> but the truth is, and I want to uh, echo what. Uh, uh, Mr. Chico and Mr. Reefman said, and this was a team effort by the Alderman, my administration, our Deputy Mayor, and he's out in this effort. And what I mean by that is, everybody knows what it means to have an idea. Everybody knows what it means to put all your sweat and equity into that storefront. Or to take what's in your living room out of your living room and it, take it out and pass that. And you are, the, the amount of money we're given from $200,000 down to $30,000. No bank would look at you. And you know you have an idea that's gonna work. And nobody will give you the time of day. And nobody in your family will talk to you anymore. Because you've been by trying to get that money and you know, you're not invited to Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner anymore. And no bank will talk to you. But you, don't, you know you got something. There are businesses in here that are taking buildings that have been closed for a decade and are now going to be a vibrant small business That's with people right. working in it. That's what we're talking about. Or taking it something that exists on the south side to the west side or the west side to the south side and taking a, and expanding and adding another 30 tables. And it's everything that you've been believing in in the city of Chicago could be a partner in that effort. And I was telling them earlier, and this is what I'm really excited also about, the bulk of the money of this $3.2 million for these 32 businesses all came when McDonald's moved their headquarters out of the suburbs into the city of Chicago. And so when McDonald's moved, it's not, yes, great building, there's about 1,200 people working building that, it's going to be 2,000 people working in there, and there's going to be 32 new businesses in our neighborhood that are thriving and growing and striving. Just yeah. 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 I say, which good thing to have a thriving central business district? and a good thing to have a thriving neighborhood business. So when you go down, you have you come up, you want to have coffee, you want to go to breakfast, you want to go have some barbecue, you want to have a vegetarian food, you want to buy flowers in case you forgot it was your anniversary. <laughs> you have all those stores out there in your neighborhood that makes it a neighborhood. And I'm just proud that the city of Chicago is going to be part of the 32 different journeys that was set. Also, I want to note to everybody, this was our first down payment. We now have the type of growth, when I say this, Chicago's number one city five years in a row in downtown and corporate relocations in America. That means we have, starting next year, and we're gonna start the application process this fall, we're gonna have nearly 20 million more dollars to do this. Yes. So as we grow, we're making sure that all parts of the city can participate in that. So when McDonald's moves, GE leaves Pennsylvania, comes to the city of Chicago. We have other companies coming and relocating, expanding the city. That's an opportunity to make sure all 77 neighborhoods across the city of Chicago, the businesses and the family businesses, hundreds and hundreds of people are going to be working in these businesses that are going to be supporting a family and making our neighborhoods viable places. And as the coach said, and we all know this, that means when somebody has a job, they have hope, not despair. And then when somebody sees in their neighborhood not a cracked sidewalk or a boarded up storefront, but they see a vibrant business, we give kids and, uh, and our families and our neighborhoods, and remember, we all know this, and I can say this on, particularly on this day, kids cannot be what they cannot see. That's right. That's right. They cannot be, and if they're walking to school and they see a boarded up building that becomes a business, a restaurant, a coffee shop, a digital company, a Sisters in Film, which is gonna be an artistic, a building in the South Shore that's going to help women of color make movies. That, see, we're, I know you all got stuck over at the chicken. <laughs> Some of it, yeah. Yolanda's got a business that is going to, it's called Sisters in Film, that's going to be an archive and help young women of color 
make movies. And so this is going to, and I'm, awesome. I'm thinking of buying stock early on, man. Because uh, I think this is, given what's happened, this is going to be an incredible success for the city. There's ice cream stores that are going in, coffee shops. I can, listen, I can go on and on. I, and I'm going to start crying, so I'm going to get off the stage. I want you to get everybody here. We're about to call up all the winners. Give the old men again a hand. Give the old men again a hand. mayors from around the world, Melbourne, Toronto, Vienna, Prague, all talking about how do you create and invest and have new funding mechanisms to help your city grow and solve problems where there's a short of money in an inclusive way. And I presented what the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund is doing. And to the mayor, they all were taking notes to ask for copies exactly what we're doing. So Chicago is trailblazing because of the businesses we're going to meet and what we're doing together. Congratulations. So uh, when we uh, started this fund, we wanted to make catalytic investments at the neighborhood. Invest in small businesses, have them grow, and have them help to drive change. That was a goal. When we, the mayor and I, got to make calls to these businesses and meet them, we're, I'm 100% certain that that is exactly what's going to happen. These business owners are passionate, they're engaged, they're energetic, and they deeply care about their neighborhoods and growing their businesses. And so we are so thrilled to be able to introduce them what to up, you Kenny, today. Kenny. The first is Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream. It's in Brownsville. <laughs> The next is Gallery Guichard, which is very, is already a bronze outstanding, a beautiful gallery with the addition of an outdoor sculpture garden to house rotating exhibits. Sip and Saver, also an existing business in Bronzeville, at several locations to open a new location in the newly revitalized Roseland building. Yes, there's someone in line. Okay. Ayanze Bronze. It was also in Bronzeville, and they're building a build-out in Bronzeville cooking for the second location of their Korean restaurant. Nut and Egg Bakery and Catering. It's also in Bronzeville. They'll establish Brooks, Bricks and Mortar location of the 20-year-old bakery and catering business. Original Soul Vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah. and streamline their space. Sisters in Cinema. the property for a new home for Sisters in Cinema, a nonprofit that pays homage to African American storytellers and trains and educates the next generation of storytellers. South Shore Brew. Open shop that will offer Southern Fair, grab and go pastries and coffee from Bridgeburg Coffee featuring African beans. A new look restaurant, also in South Chicago, renovating, upgrading an existing restaurant, including construction of a backyard dining patio. Digital Factory Technologies in South Shore establish a new office for their mobile media tech and marketing company. The Quarry Event Center in South Shore develop a new cafe space to incubate micro food businesses in the shared commercial kitchens. Okay. Mickey's Retro Grill in Abilene Park to open a second location of his already fantastic restaurant. Majestic Florist in Chatham, a complete renovation of his local florist shop, a beautiful florist shop in Chatham. We will. Carnicia La Hacienda, Engage Park. Fourth location of the family grocery business, including improving the interior facade in their parking lot and roof. The Honeycomb in Chicago Lawn to renovate and reopen the storage bar and was shut down due to a fire in 2012. Ivory Dental Special Specialist in Auburn Gresham for the purchase and build out of the second location of this fantastic dental practice. Madeira's Down Home Kitchen in North Lawndale for the expansion of their restaurant. <laughs> Home and Grown in North Lawndale for 
a new component of the MLK Blooms initially that will wholesale and retail perennials to Chicago-based landscaping firms. <laughs> Carla's Kitchen. and expansion of this restaurant. Wandale Christian Development Corporation. Second location of Turkey Chop on the ground floor of their MLK Legacy Apartment Building. Skylar D's Catering Company, also in North Wandale. Three, four, five art gallery at East Yard. Oh, 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 West Austin Development Center of Bath. Third story child care facility for cultural presentation and theater environment. Business. Sugar Rush, also in Austin, to support the start of the street show. I go brown sugar. Uncle Remus's restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Restaurant, who's one of our awardees to speak on behalf of the awardees. 